Good job. Pink. Three in a row. Good job. Look how pretty they are. So we're going to be pickling our beets. We've gone ahead and washed them off, scrubbed them really good, cut the leaves and stems off. You're going to leave about an inch of the stem on them and we'll take that off before we actually pickle them. But right now we're getting them boiling. So this is slowly heating up. We've put the larger beets in the bottom, but we're gonna boil those until they're all nice and soft. As for the tops, we're gonna be canning those. So I've set those aside. We're gonna start washing them and can them up just like you would can spinach or kale or collards or any of those items, any leafy greens. So we'll be doing that in just a minute. So as you can see with these, a knife has started to insert easy for them. So we're gonna go ahead and as they're done, we're pulling them out and setting them here to cool. Once they're cooled enough that we can handle them, we'll pull all the skins off. And get our brine going. So over here on the stove, I've got six cups of apple cider vinegar, one and a half cups of brown sugar, about 24 cloves, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. Now we're using either kosher or canning salt. I'll be using canning salt today. It's important anytime you can, again, to remember to use either canning or kosher salt. I almost forgot to mention, you also need six cups of either hot water or you can use some of the water that you just boiled all those beets down in. I use the water from the beets because it adds more flavor than just plain water. Okay. So these are done and they've cooled off, so we're just gonna cut the ends off. And then this just peels right back. You really don't even need a knife, but it does help sometimes. And you can see the discoloration from this touching some of the other beets. It's important to remember that beets will stain, so we've got our red cutting board here so we don't have to worry about it. And if you have uh, counters you're worried about staining, just keep that in mind. Make sure you wipe it up if anything gets on them. And once we get this off, we can come over here and slice it up. Now there's a couple different ways you can slice it. You can do it in cubes, you can do it in slices, really whichever way you prefer. I wouldn't do anything bigger than maybe one to two inch slices if you're doing uh, cubes. So about this size is as big as I would do. For slices, you'll wanna do them relatively thin. And then we'll get these in the jars. We're filling these up to half an inch head space, and then we're gonna debubble. So it's really important to check these for bubbles like this one right here. And again, you don't wanna use a metallic item to get it out. It's best if you can use like a silicone spatula or a wooden, uh, the end of a wooden spoon works really well for that too. Still got a fair bit of brine left over here. And I'm actually gonna jar that up. I'm gonna can it with everything else here. So I've just filled one jar, I'll probably fill one more and we'll can it, same as the rest of them, half an inch head space for the same amount of time. And what you can do is you can keep this on your shelf, that way next time you're canning pickles, if you ever run short, you can just pull one of these off the shelf, heat it up, and use it to fill in the rest of your jars. I'll be using the metal flats for these. You can use reusable lids. I've just found that they stain, so I don't want to stain any of my uh, my white ones. Now eventually, if I do get any reds, I'll be switching to reusable for these.
you're using the metal flats as you take them out you'll actually hear them sealing you can hear a little ping sound and that's the sound of the jar sealing you'll learn to really like it it's actually one of my favorite things about the metal lids that you do not get with the reusable lids so these are all done we've set them out i'm going to let the kids go through and date them it's one of their favorite little chores and then we've got to put these on the shelf and let them sit for two weeks anytime you pickle an item you want to give it two weeks before you eat it it just helps with the flavor and then we're going to be doing this all over today so we're about halfway done with our beets today's batch we're going to do it with pickles or with uh, onions in it rather so as we fill the jars with the beets we're going to do a couple layers of uh, onions in there with this recipe and really most pickle recipes you can vary it a whole lot so for this recipe i used apple cider vinegar some people use white vinegar i used brown sugar some people use white sugar um, for seasoning i did cloves some people use uh, pickling spices and that's perfectly fine as well the important thing that you need to keep in mind if you're swapping any of these things out is you don't want to mess with the ratios specifically of apple cider vinegar to water so you don't want to add any more water it should always be a one-to-one -one ratio if not, um, some recipes call for even more apple cider vinegar than water, and that's fine too. The main thing is that for pickles especially, beets and any, uh, like if you do asparagus or green beans, any low acid food that you're pickling, it's really important to have the right amount of apple cider vinegar. So if you're going to mess with any of the recipes, you can mess with the types of vinegar, but not the amounts of vinegar. Two. Two. Two down and twenty down. Two thousand twenty-one. Two down and twenty-one. In all of our beets. So now it's time to take care of the beet tops. So you can can spinach, broccoli leaves, cauliflower leaves, um, beet greens collards any of those leafy greens are all done the same way so you, what you'll do is you'll wash all the leaves make sure you pick out any ones that have bites or holes in them or anything you know yellow or wilted anything that's obviously not in really good shape that you wouldn't want to eat so once we do that we slice them up i've sliced these into just little strips and then we need to blanch them to get them ready so we've got our water boiling we're going to blanch them for three to five minutes basically until they're wilted as these are getting done and nice and wilted, we're gonna be packing them into pint jars. Again, as always, you wanna make sure your jars are sterilized and don't have any chips or anything in them. Once we get these packed, we'll fill it up with water. So once you lightly pack these, make sure to debubble them. We're gonna give them a one inch head space. And from here, we're ready to pressure can them. For pints, we're going to be pressure canning these for 70 minutes at 11 pounds.